work with anyone yet. But um, can you talk a little bit about where things left off with Felicity and Oliver? And what kind of, um, I guess there's two parts to this. The, the tension that might be there from the whole situation that played out at the end of the season, and also Brandon Ruth's character and the potential tension. Um, in terms of um, Oliver and Felicity, you know, obviously they've grown in closeness through the years, and, and she, uh, you know, even though he said what he said under certain circumstances at the end of the year last year, there was a truth to it that we explore early on. And a large part of Oliver's journey this year is, is dealing with uh, whether or not he can have it all, as it were, you know, or is he just, has he uh, just commissioned himself to a life of crime fighting and that's it? You know, or, or but what about the life part of it, you know, and the fuller life? So we'll be dealing with that, and and, and he gets right at it, you know, especially because there's been these intervening months that have happened between the, the finale and the first episode, and, uh, and, and what we sort of dramatize and show is that um, there's a... a uh, almost a domestic kind of quality to their their lives and how they've grown, you know, together. Uh, and so we deal with some of those feelings. In terms of Ray Palmer, uh, he comes in and, and um, you know, is, uh, tries in the first episode to, um, to buy Queen Industries. He's particularly interested in Queen Industries that there was this IT girl that went from being an IT girl there to being, um, to being the assistant to the chairman of the company. And uh, he's particularly interested in her rise, uh, and has some questions for her. And they uh, and and uh, and I'll, so he's very interested in her. So would you say that he's interested in her as more of a suspicion or romantic interest? Or I, I I think uh, you know because we've got so much going on in a good way on the shows, we rarely sort of uh, just have the characters in scene where there's not some emotional. Uh, development as well and so I, I think that you know uh, and the, the two of them have a lot of chemistry as well so we'll be exploring that I think and is there and I guess just going back to the, the tension that I feel like when Felicity was with um, Barry there yeah. was there was friction between her and Oliver are we going to see that again or is this going to be I mean uh, I, I I think Oliver wouldn't be human if uh, if uh, if he started to it, uh, and 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 I, I and that was fun to play with last year, obviously. And there were some things we learned watching that that we wanted to explore in the creation of this character as well with Ray. So um, so I think you're right to connect the dots. Okay. Will we get a little uh, backstory or background on uh, Felicity's character? We do. You know, this is the first year we we jump out of our flashbacks with Oliver in a bigger way to do some other flashbacks. And we we do in episode five we do a big one with her. Uh, there's another character. We do another big set of flashbacks for all in the first seven, you know. So um, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get to know. We'll, we'll, we'll be filling in more blanks in her life as well. Can you talk a little bit how you'll be splitting your time between doing this and now doing Flash as well. They are um, well. The, all the writers' offices and the, the editorial offices that where we edit the episodes are all on the same floor. So that helps a lot uh, to go from one office to the other. Um, new shows always take the most time because they're new and, and you don't have that set of episodes yet to point at and go, that's a great episode, that's a great episode. You, you have the pilot, you can keep pointing at it, but at some point you have to point at uh, other ones. And uh, so, um, but at the same time, Arrow's the firstborn. And so, you know, uh, I think it's kind of like, you know, you, you, we just, it, it can be a real joy and a pleasure to just go... Uh, back and, and work with all of them just to break stories and, and uh, it's just it's fun to have them both informing each other in a lot of ways. Um, I, I, I think like the for me the joy of it is like the comic books. You just don't know when it when or how it's going to happen really and, and and that there should be different versions of it like mini versions where it's just like I'm calling Starling City and someone is on the phone. You know we did like a little one like that at the tail end of last year on Arrow where we brought in. Cisco and Caitlin before you know we did the pilot, and they were shooting the pilot like the day before, and then they were running over and doing. There's a lot of that, the smaller ones, and then also some, you know, wanting to do some bigger ones, obviously, where there's villains that go across, uh, and you know, I mean, I, I think um, those are always the most, those are incredibly evocative. 
I like how um, you know each season you have a certain setting. So the first season was the diner. They always met at the diner and had burgers. The second season was uh, Vermont, so the you know the nightclub getting yeah. started and such. And that really fit well with the storyline, obviously. Is yeah. there a, a setting in the third season? That's that a great question. Uh, it was economically driven always, <laughs> both of them. So uh, um, we have a little bit more money now, so we can we can, they can eat at multiple places. They don't they're not just stuck at the same restaurant. Um, um, but I'm sure something emerges because I think you're right. You know, there really is like something that is evocative of the of the place. Oliver gets a new place to live. Uh, so he's not living in the barracks of the. Uh, he's not living the, in the exactly in the, his in the headquarters. Yeah. It, well, in, in in the first episode, he is, but he he uh, soon after finds a new place to live. Seems like Arrow has kind of really mastered the format. He's mastered the new format of superhero dramas that are serialized but also have smaller arcs. Can you just talk a little bit about finding a rhythm and whether or not you're going to stick with that? Because I feel like it, it's been evolving. The first season to the second season. Is the third season going to be, you know, are you stepping away from the, the, the format and the tone? No, I mean, we, we do try and change certain pieces of it up. And there's obviously very helpful to have the big bad and that kind of thing and the, the themes that connect everybody and connect all the different issues. But the fun for me is the... Uh, just the action adventure element you know I, I think a lot of times when we're breaking the stories of the indie movies in terms of like painting your characters into these corners and not necessarily knowing how you're kind of uh, you know going to get them out of it and that every week is this sort of a larger than life kind of just action adventure that touches down for human moments and then we sort of kind of construct a way to kind of get towards some other thing so it, it's I think it's it's um, and we do really reference the comic books in that way too I think they had a wonderful kind of way still do of serializing but also making episodic the stories and they really just lend themselves structurally and tonally uh, this kind of storytelling does I think to kind of what network television has become to a certain extent are you at, at writing are you at all affected by what's going on on the feature side here the DC not really. I mean, they, they kind of, we do, I mean, you know, we haven't mentioned Metropolis. We haven't mentioned Gotham. Uh, uh, you know, we, we stay away from that stuff. And uh, But we just do our own thing. Maybe dealing with or constantly dealing with. Could you uh, talk just briefly about um, using Brandon Ralph as your, I guess, alter ego of the Adam? Right? Yeah, the red color. Yeah. He's great. I mean, he's so tall and strapping, and, you know, can go toe to toe with Oliver and, and uh, Charlie. We, we said we kind of had John Wayne with Oliver, that that essence, and we wanted kind of Cary Grant. He has that quality, I think, you know. Uh, and it, I think it's going to be nice to the audience to see those sides of him, which he's obviously delivered on it in, in, in something even like Chocolate, you know, which he's great on too. Um, you know, and so. Uh, uh, he has, I think, uh, like with all the actors on the show, we, we want to use kind of everything they're great at, we want to exploit. You know? So uh, he has that charm. Thank you.